channel. So today I wanted to do a video specifically on the 93 to 97 uh, F bodies with the Gen 2 small block Chevy, uh, the LT1. Now I I know I got a video up on the LS1, the best modifications for an LS1, and they're pretty much the same, but I know we got some subscribers that have the 93 to 97, and I wanted to make a video specifically for them. So, uh, so we'll just start by talking about some of the differences on the LT1. Uh, one being the OptiSpark. Now, I know a lot of people have a negative opinion of the OptiSpark, and it does have limitations, but when it's working good, it works extremely good. It's, it's extremely accurate. Uh, just going from memory, I believe that it, it's the computer knows where the crankshaft is right down to uh, one degree, which is which is very accurate. Uh, the worst Opti Sparks are on the '93 to '94 because in '95 they switched to uh, a vented Opti Spark because I think uh, the air inside the the cap and rotor over time would get ionization, which could cause misfires and and things like that. But uh, now you can get, there, there are certain companies that make OptiSparks uh, for the 93 to 94 that are vented, and that was a big help. And another issue with them is, is because they're sitting underneath the water pump, if the water pump went out, it would leak down onto the OptiSpark, and that caused problems, and oil leaks can cause problems. But uh, overall... In my opinion, the OptiSpark's actually a pretty good piece. You just got, there's a few things, it's got a few limitations that you, you got to take care of. Then uh, the next thing that really sets the LT1 apart from almost any engine is reverse flow cooling. But reverse flow cooling, uh, uh, from what I understand, it uh, makes the cooling system a lot more uniform and you don't get the hot spots that you do in, in other engines. And uh, you can take advantage of that when it comes time to rebuild the LT1, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So anyway, we'll start out with uh, some of the free and uh, the cheap modifications. Uh, the first thing is the throttle body bypass. Uh, that's a cheap modification you can make. And then a couple uh, cheap modifications that I would recommend would be 160 degree thermostat and a manual fan switch and reason being these cars are very sensitive to temperature and and uh, the performance can fluctuate quite quite a bit if the the engine is a little too warm I know this from experience because uh, I had an LT1 car it's the black car you'll see on the channel the the F1 Camaro and uh, until I got the therm well the thermostat alone isn't enough you need the manual fan switch but i know back 20 some years ago we used to do a lot of street racing and uh after i put a manual fan switch in and plus i had the you can't really go by the gauge gauge doesn't really t it'll tell you if it's too hot or if it's cold but uh what you need is something that'll show you the actual temperature and I had a, they call it an LT1 Scan Master. I don't know if it's still available now or not, but anyway, the, the LT1 Scan Master let me look at the coolant temperature and it read out in, uh, in uh, degrees, a digital, it had a digital display that read out in the degrees so you knew exactly what the temperature was. And I know I would always try to keep the car between 175 and 185. That seemed to be where it worked the best, but it, Anytime it creeped up to 195 or more, it would really it would slow the car down a lot. So that's why, to me, these are must-have modifications, and they're cheap. And then another mod that's cheap, it doesn't add much power, but it's cheap, and that's the throttle body airfoil. I would definitely recommend one of them. And uh, so the next thing, uh, if you get an automatic car, they some come with 273s and, and some come with 323s. If you got the 323s, I'd just leave them. But if you got the 273s, you definitely want to upgrade. I would upgrade to at least a 373. And then if you get the stick car, they all come with 342s. But the problem with the stick car, uh, these rear ends are very weak. 
So the first upgrade, and it's expensive, is I would do a rear end upgrade on uh, if I had a stick tire. And quarter mile performance, this video is all about quarter mile performance. So uh, 60 foot times are very important. And you try to launch a stick tire real hard with a set of sticky tires and the rear end's not gonna last very long. Whereas the automatic, uh, you can you can get away with uh, the little 7.5 with the automatic for a while until you get your 60 foot times down real low okay so then the the next modification i do on on an lt1 car be cold air intake because the stock intake on those cars aren't very good and i you, you want to make sure you get one that uh, feeds from from the the spot in front of the wheel well it, the the air filter goes down into the box in there and uh Another thing I did on when I had mine was that little box in the bottom. I cut a hole in it and put a little, uh, made a little air scoop out of, uh, like, uh, I think I just used a piece of tin and just made an air scoop. Then after that, uh, like I say, we're, we're, we're all about quarter mile performance here. We don't care about dyno numbers and all that stuff. So the next modification would be a set of drag radials because in order to run fast, you gotta get traction. And so I'll put a set of drag radials on. Okay, so then after that, uh, headers and exhaust. Now, I wouldn't even waste my time on shorty headers. I'd go straight to long tubes. And if you watch this channel any at all, you know we always recommend speed engineering just because uh, the price is good, and they're, all their stuff's made out of stainless steel, so the quality is good. So I'd go with a set of long tubes uh, from Speed Engineering, but like I say, if you want coated headers or if you want one of the bigger names, that's fine. But this this is a budget channel. Uh, we always try to, we got tight budgets on this channel, as you've probably already seen. So we try to keep things as cheap as possible. And now for an exhaust system, I, I got one of two one of two recommendations. Uh, I'd either go with the SLP loudmouth because again uh, the price is is reasonable and it's made of stainless steel. But if you uh, if you can spend a little more money, I would go with the Speed Engineering True Dual Exhaust. Now mind you, they don't list them for the LT1 cars. But I have seen videos where people have put them on the LT1 cars and they don't take that much modification. Now, the True Dual Exhaust from Speed Engineering, it is loud and it, it does drone, but uh, for this video, we only care about quarter mile performance. So that, I recommend the Dual Exhaust. And like I said, it, it may need slight modification, but it, it wouldn't be too much. Okay, then after that, if you have if you have an automatic car I would go with a torque converter and uh, now normally I would never recommend going with a cheaper torque converter but uh, some of them high-end torque converters are pretty expensive so if I had the stock 4L60 or the 4L60E I might I would probably look into a cheaper converter for now just because that transmission is not going to last forever if, if it's still working good you might as well get some use out of it but i'd put a little cheaper torque converter in it and uh, and my reasoning behind it is is because the stock 4l60es they they're pretty weak and if you do any amount of quarter mile racing with them and you're adding a little extra power eventually they're going to break and and oftentimes when they go they'll they'll fill your torque converter full of trash you can always go with the more expensive one but if you do go with one of the more expensive ones call the company that you're buying it from and talk to them tell them what you have tell them what you plan to do to the car in the future and they'll they'll probably set you up with a good one and uh as far as gears with the automatic with the lt1 i'd probably stick with the 323s for now and like I say, the stick car, you need to upgrade your rear end. I'd go right straight to 410s or 411s, whichever one the GMs come with. And then with the stick car, eventually you're going to need a clutch upgrade. But 
I would stick with the salt clutch until it starts, till it, till it goes bad. Okay, so after you get that done, the next big modifications would be the cam and heads. And before you do the cam and heads, you're going to have to uh, budget for bigger injectors and a new fuel pump. Because the stock fuel pump and the stock, stock injectors won't be enough for uh, heads and cam car. Now, if you just go cam only, you might get away with it. But I've never data logged one of these LT1 cars, so I'm not sure how good the fuel system is in them. When you do a cam, or and especially if you do the cam and head, you're probably going to need an upgrade on your injectors and probably the fuel pump. So you want to budget that in. Now, if you're on a really tight budget, uh, the heads on these uh, LT1 cars, while they're... They don't compare to the new cars today, but neither does the LS1 as far as that goes. But if you're on a really tight budget, you can port the, the LT1 heads. Now, if you've got to pay someone to port them, I would, well, it depends on what they charge, I guess. But anyway, for, for you do-it-yourselfers that are fairly handy with doing modifications, uh, you can port the stock heads yourself. That's what I did. I ported the stock heads on the LT1 and it made a huge difference. And all I, all, and I, I did, now mind you, I did practice on a couple sets of cylinder heads before that. So I, I kind of had a good idea what I was doing. But uh, if you've never done it before, just, uh, well, I bought a book from David Vizard. That's how I ported mine but now there's videos up that you can watch that'll uh that'll show you what to show you give you the basics on porting cylinder heads but anyway like i say if you're on a tight budget you can port the factory heads and uh just take your time you got to buy a few tools to do it with and uh just upgrade the uh, the hardware the springs and retainers and all that stuff for whatever cam you're putting in and you'll get a pretty good gain out of it but uh if your budget's a little higher then i would save up for uh set of aftermarket heads i know trick flow and afr they all make cylinder heads and there's probably many more that make cylinder heads for these cars and cylinder heads on these cars will make a huge difference and when it comes to a cam uh I wouldn't go just the biggest cam that you can, a lot of people like to go with the biggest cam that they can put in it, but you want to keep your, your RPM in mind, how high do you plan on revving the engine, and, and get your cam, get a cam that's uh, set up for that, that RPM. And uh, another thing too, when you're buying a cam, it wouldn't hurt to call a company, because uh, they have a lot of experience with this stuff. You'd call, and, and they could probably match you up a cam to go with whatever aftermarket cylinder head that you, you decide to go with. And, uh, and then the intake manifold. Now, to me, the stock intake manifold is a good piece, and if I was putting heads and cam on, I'd probably just port the factory one to get a little more flow out of it and match it up to the intake ports on your aftermarket cylinder heads. But there are a couple choices. I know Elderbrock makes one. So, I mean, you're not, you, you have a few choices. And uh, so the next thing would, uh, you're going to need tuning with the cam and heads, obviously. And you could either get the equipment to tune it yourself or... Uh, there's lots of people that still tune these cars, so you shouldn't have an issue getting the tuning done. And while you're at it, I would upgrade the throttle body. If you got the heads and cam, I'd probably go straight to a 58 millimeter, and that, that way you could have it all tuned at the same time. Anyway, guys, that's, I don't want to keep the, make the video too long, but uh, those of you with LT1 cars, I know a lot of people say that the LS1 is better, and maybe from the factory it is, but these LT1s are a good engine, and you, there's a lot you can do with them, and there's a lot of aftermarket parts out there for them, and a lot of times they tend to be a little cheaper than the LS1 parts too, so that's an advantage. And then we'll get back to the rever reverse flow cooling. Uh, the, the reverse flow cooling will help you run a little more uh, compression, and... Uh, so you want to take advantage of that, 
you know, there's calculations that have to be made to make sure you don't get it too high. You don't want detonation if you're running on pump gas. But, uh, and I'd, I've never heard of E85 being used on these cars, but that would be something to look at too. Because it would probably allow you to run more compression. So there's a lot, a lot of research that I've not done because I don't have an LT1 car now. But anyway, I wanted to make a video for you guys because I know we got some of you guys on our channel. And I didn't want to leave you guys out. And uh, like I said, I, I'm a big fan of the LT1. I think it's got a huge amount of potential. And you just... And the, there's lots of parts available, so there's no reason why you can't get one of these LT1 cars to run just as fast as a LS1 car. And uh, fire cylinder heads go, even the LS1 cylinder heads, although they were really good in 1997 when the, the LT, LS1 came out, they, they, they aren't that great either. So, I mean, when you get an LL, LS1 car, if you want to make some real power, you get a... You gotta upgrade the cylinder heads too. And uh, the aftermarket cylinder heads really close the gap. Now mind you, the aftermarket cylinder heads for an LS1 usually do flow better than the, the LT ones, but uh, the aftermarket definitely closes the gap pretty good. And uh, oh, something I didn't mention is suspension pieces. Uh, you'll know as you go along, like, once you get the drag radials on, if you got good traction, okay, you're good. But as you start to increase power, you start losing traction. So you have to, and all the pieces between the LS1 Camaros and the LT1 Camaros, they all, pretty well all of them are interchangeable. So as you go along, as you start making more power and you start losing traction, you got to start doing some suspension work. And it's just the same as, as well, any car really. But uh, like I say, the pieces are... Are pretty much the same between the LS1 and the LT1 so keep that in mind is as you go along as you start building power you're gonna have to start looking into the, the suspension because uh, we're, we're, we're doing these modifications to lower our, our quarter mile times and you got to have traction to run a good quarter mile time anyway guys thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one